All right, cool. Allow me to start the recording. Thank you guys for joining another Flutter KE Vibes. We, today's topic, we are going to like discuss more about CICD and hopefully um see if somebody has implemented it and you know what tools that what tools they use for their CICD development using Flutter on flat on their Flutter apps rather and you know learn from each other. It's quite an honor to have people who've already done a bit of DevOps or an in-depth of dev DevOps. So yeah, we're looking forward to learning from each other and you know basically just sharing what we know. Um I would like to open the floor to literally everyone. However, I would start by asking questions. So um what is CICD? Anyone with an in-depth of what CICD is? Um Please feel free to like answer. Oh, another thing to like point out today, uh, it's mostly just me asking questions. And you know, if you have like a code base that you could share with us, please also feel free to like, you know, shed light on us at the same time. And don't feel shy, these are the vibes. Just unmute your mic and speak. So the first question is what is CICD? Anyone with an idea? Yes, no, can I call out names? Hello. Yes, Dan Vic. Now, um... According to my knowledge, CI CD is uh, divided into two. CI means continuous integration, uh, which is the process by which your new changes to a code base are continually added to, or like changes to a system. Let me use changes to a system is continuously added to the system. Basically, it's non destructive, it's just continuing to build on what you have, which is using such tools as Git or any uh, uh, versioning system. So that is CI. CD is continuous delivery, which means uh, continue to up the process by which you update or make deploy changes to the live environment without destructively uh, affecting users in such a way that uh, changes that you're making uh, the system continues to to work without the without users being affected by the changes that you're making behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's absolutely correct. So thank you, Danvik, for that. So yeah, that's what uh, CI CD is, and there is also another thing of continuous deployment. Uh, do you know about that as well? Um, so if I may uh, put this, the what I understand by continuous deployment is uh, the, it's like a practice that will be able, that helps you to uh, or rather it's after after all after your CICD it's like a a, a process after all your changes are um, have passed then the, this stage uh, basically pushes this to production um yeah i think dan has his hand up okay and go ahead and talk okay so maybe to just from my perspective is um uh in a layman's way is uh we we, we develop mm -hmm. and then we we always deploy at the end of the day that's the goal so essentially we keep on developing we keep on deploying developing deploying so but in the process of de developing we have a versioning system that we are using um of which now it separates our um, local uh setup to maybe um, a common place where we let's say a staging environment or rather we are working with a, another production environment so essentially with continuous development 
uh, requires us to actually continuously deploy these particular platforms to so that our users can can access them. So essentially, with CI/CD now, it's a process of auto, it's essentially automating that particular process. Other than doing it manually, you have um, builds or rather you have scripts that help you to as the more you contribute, you, you develop the more they are deployed to the users. So the deployment is essentially pushing all the changes to production, having them live so that users can be able to access them directly without having to do that particular process manually. Yes, that's, that's... Okay, yeah. Thank you, thank you so much for that, Dan. Um, okay, that's great. So this, puts me to the next the next question um what are the benefits of cicd um now because now we are talking about uh, continuous development in integration and and deployment so i feel like the most important um, benefits of CI CD is basically helping us developers be able to like push code that has passed all the all the green checks or tests that we we have set in our code bases and um, we make sure it makes sure that we are pushing clean code or the structured code that you wish and you know pro probably pushing code that doesn't have uh, any errors and um, also or rather it does a, a little bit of does does it really do a little bit of test for our code base though? No, yes, no. Well not per se, but I think it, it it's uh, a... mm -hmm. I I wouldn't call them uh tests on uh, on our logic directly but uh they, they, they it's kind of like a check on that particular process is it uh directly uh, successful in one way or another so those particular checks mm -hmm. keep up the project or rather keep up the process uh, successful or rather if they fail then you can be able to identify why or rather where to change where to improve or rather what to do next year Okay, great. So what is the benefit of now writing CICD in this in this context? Well, it saves a lot of time in uh, delivering uh, mm -hmm. changes directly to the user um, for which that is the goal. Uh, two, it, uh, it improves on the process uh, and then uh, it, 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 it essentially makes the process easy to actually do. So as much as you are building, mm -hmm. you, are de you are deploying it as in a very much easier way as a compared to doing it manually. And then it is less of errors. Or rather, once the builds are successful, you are just sure the process is going to be successful. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. That's amazing. Um, yeah. Like you've mentioned, it also it saves a lot of time. Um, on that, it set up small code changes that are merged really quickly. Yeah, it facilitates the the it facilitates the re release of code to end users. Pro, that's correct, right? Uh huh. So, moving on to like the next question, I understand now there are a couple of tools that are used for CI/CD, but what are these tools? What tools do you guys use for your day-to-day -day development on the CICD? Anyone? Yeah, I think the most basic one uh, we, I normally use is GitHub Actions. And uh, yeah, yeah, I've used that a lot on uh, GitLab. This should GitHub Actions and GitLab. I haven't interacted with Jetkiss that much, but I've used it like in one project. So I can say like those two, GitHub Actions and uh, GitLab plus uh, Jetkins. Those are the two, three that I know. Maybe there are more. I think. Uh, does anyone have 
any other tools that they have used for the CICD? <clears throat> Well, other than the common one, I think I've also used um, GitHub Actions only for now. But uh, I hear there is also another one that's called, um, um, no, it's not it's not necessarily like another one, but it's called uh, Fastlane. Is there anyone who has experience with Fastlane? Yes, I do. Oh, okay. So how is your experience with it? And how do you compare with other other tools? So Fastlane, it usually depends because mm -hmm. Fastlane is helpful when you want to make a deployment to like um, the App Store. Mm -hmm. So for most cases, if I was making an app, let's say as an MVP, I would use Firebase hosting to deploy the APK or the IPA uh, in the case of iOS. But now let's say I wanted to deliver it to actual users. Now you'd, you'd bring in Fastlane. Mm -hmm. So it's sometimes it can be a bit complex to set up, especially in the case of iOS because of all the certificates, but it's quite helpful because all you need is just one command and basically your app publishes itself. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Interesting. Um, so yeah, so is like uh Fastlane an improved version of uh GitHub Actions? Because I think you can also like publish your application using say using rather uh GitHub Actions. With Fastlane. They, are, they can actually work together. Mm -hmm. But personally, I prefer, okay, personally, I prefer combining both of them because that way, at least you can test the code, make sure there are no errors, and then you publish it to the Play Store, App Store. And it can even deliver things like uh, screenshots for your store listing. So you mm -hmm. can update them using Fastlane. Um, the descriptions and all that oh okay interesting um okay that's that's interesting you should probably do you like have like a, a sample code that you could show us on that uh not at the moment because the code is actually failing it's what i'm looking at right now okay yeah but but um yeah um I think I have, just let me do a quick check. Okay, so I can show you the Android side, the iOS side still needs some work. Okay, that would be nice. So do I share my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can see the screen. Yes. So, for you to set it up, you'll have to go to each individual folder. So you have Android and you have your iOS folder. Once you set it up, it should create a Fastlane folder here. I don't know if there's a way to increase the size of this, but I hope all of you can see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so once you set it up, it creates these files for you. We have the app file. So here you just state the package name of your app. And then here, this is essentially just um, the keys that will be used to publish your app on the Play Store. Now, of course, I think you can notice that I've added it to my GitHub Ignore, so it's not going to be added to GitHub repository, 
So this file, I now store it on GitHub Secrets so that it's now delivered to Fastlin using GitHub Actions while I'm publishing. So as soon as the code passes the test checks and everything, this file is now generated from the GitHub Secrets and added to Fastlane to continue the process. And then now with the fast file, so you just state the default platform, which is Android. Then, um, yeah, you set the Gradle version and the build number so it gets that from your Flutter, Flutter version. So that will be the version name, the version code. And then you add a description so I at least can tell you where it is in the process. So in this case, deploy a new version to Google Play. And then now you create you create a lane. So it's basically, basically in the name, so fast lane. You can create different lanes. You can create one to deploy. You can create one to maybe deploy to the Play Store, deploy to uh, maybe internal testing. So in my case, this, this one deploys to internal testing. So you can see here, once it sets the version, which it gets from up here, it creates a clean bundle release, which is the, instead of an APK, I create a dot .aab. And then now we get the build from the build folder. Okay, uh, yeah, build folder is here. So it will create the build. And then now add that to the process and then send it to the internal testing truck. And then it marks the release as draft. So right now it's a draft because this is an app that I'm about to launch and I'm working on it by myself. So uh, it's a bit tricky because I'm working on web and mobile and the backend. But I mean, those situations where something works on this side, something breaks on the other side. So right now the backend is broken, but at least I'm able to upload it to the Play Store. Now for, to make it easier to use, I now have uh, a make file down here. So the make file just, once you just run this command, so deploy dash Android, it now tells you that it's sending the Android build to close testing. Then it installs the bundle and, oh yeah, another thing. So when, when it says installing the bundle, it's just setting up the requirements for fast lane. So in this case, it could be like a Gradle or something else. So yeah, it just gets everything that it needs for the Gradle file to work, and then sends it to Fastlane. And then from there, Fastlane can deploy the app. Now in my case, I found that occasionally you'll find um, this bundle ex execute doesn't always work. So sometimes you just need to cut this out and just leave it as Fastlane deploy, but it depends on which command works for you. Then now you come to your GitHub workflow. You can see here the job for Android. So it just uh, sets up an Ubuntu environment, checks out the code, uh, sets up Flutter, and then sets up the key properties for your app. So like, I'm sure you know the key properties if you've published an app before. And then the key store. So again, also the key store, I saved it to GitHub Secrets. And the local properties, so that to be handled by the GitHub Action. And then now you say it, you set the Play Store secret, which is what I mentioned earlier. So the Play Store secret.json. Now it gets it from the GitHub secret, decodes it, and adds it to the, to the workflow. And then you set up Fastlane. So Fastlane basically works on Ruby. So you just get that. 
and then you can build and deploy and it runs the flutter pub.get to get the dependencies and runs the makefile command that I showed you here. So instead of writing all of this, three commands every single time, you just reduce it to one single command, which is make deploy Android. So I don't know, is that helpful? Or did I move too fast? Um, I, very helpful. I moved too fast. I think it's very helpful. Um, I have a question. What um, what is the trigger for building up or deploying? Do you have like a, an automatic trigger? Like let's say, for example, uh, you you push a tag or something like that. What is your trigger to, to publish to Play Store or something like that? Oh, so my trigger here is uh, when you push to the main branch. To the main branch. Okay. Not yet, not yet. Yeah. So essentially, I figured that uh, the main branch basically should mean that everything is okay because mm -hmm. now testing testing is done on the dev branch. Okay. So it okay. will do the testing on if there's a pull request to the dev branch, it will run the tests. And then if those pass, then you make the push to main and it should just go without the hitch okay noted yeah so uh, and then uh, um if you are deploying the regs let's say for example you are working on the production track on uh, on play store yeah uh, will it um is there a way you can maybe um publish directly without like for example how would you feed in the the changes basically the version changes like what has changed in this version that narration how did you do it do you like mark it as draft then go and do it yourself on play to then release or is there a way that you can like deploy automatically uh with such things i've been i've been exploring maybe uh for example if my if my um commit messages are very clear can I maybe get those commit messages from the previous build to this one and then just use that as my narration for that change and then deploy directly without actually logging into Play Store or how do you go about it? Yes, it's possible mm -hmm. um, using Fastlane because as I said, Fastlane can even, you can just create a folder for your screenshots, direct mm -hmm. it where to go. And every time you make a deploy mm -hmm. to get those items from the, from that folder. So I had begun, this is the same app, but mm -hmm. I've retired it. So as you can see here at the top, I've called it alpha. Mm -hmm. Because this is the original version of the app, but I kept on changing things. So I just restarted everything. Okay. Um, okay, basically there's some updates to some of the dependencies I use, plus my idea changed. So I decided to just uh, create a new version because I'd also butchered this one with uh, too many issues. So, oh, another thing that I haven't added to this one that I haven't shown you. Um, you're familiar with something called pre-commit if you've worked, I think, with Python. Mm -hmm. So with pre-commit, you just uh, maybe check your code before it's pushed to Git. So maybe formatting, making sure that everything, uh, maybe unused imports are removed. Mm -hmm. so, that can be handled using this pre-commit.bash. It's just something that I, I tried to implement on the Flutter side since I found it helpful on Python. But um, I think I've done that here. Okay, so in this version, I wasn't sure what I was doing in Fastlin. So you can see there's a lot of commented commands. So, here you can see that um, there's a part here saying skip upload metadata uh, or skip upload images or skip upload screenshots. So here I said true because I wanted to make the process just move much faster. But in case you wanted to, uh, maybe like you said, your changes, maybe you want to ch uh, update the change log, tell people what has changed. Yeah, it's possible to add all of that. 
pass it into Fastlane. Or if you have screenshots, something has changed. Again, just specify, uh, tell it false, and add your screenshots, and they'll be posted to to the Play Store, the App Store. Now you'll notice that for each release status of uh, specified draft, that's because my app hasn't been reviewed by Google, so it's easier for it to go as a draft rather than go as a as an actual production release. So until it gets reviewed, this line will have to remain. But once it's reviewed, then I can remove it. Because if it doesn't go as a draft, the command fails every single time. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I think, let me see if I can find. So, um, so was internal testing. So you can see the first release I tried. Yeah, it was. And, okay, I was I was working late, so we sent it at around five fourteen now. And yeah, it just goes as a as a testing release, so you can send it to internal testers. And they can test it, maybe give you feedback. And then if a new release comes in, you can, again, do the same thing, make it available to internal testers. And then if the feedback is good, you can decide to promote the release to either open testing or production. Now this this you'd have to do it manually. That's until maybe your app gets approved. But once it's approved, then all of it can just be done automatically. You just specify this on first lens. So instead of in, of uh, testing, you can just send it to production directly. Uh, okay, cool. So I have a question. You see, like how here the release status draft. Yes. So you remove that piece of code. Uh, and then you push it, let's say your application has been accepted by Google. So does mm -hmm. that mean that you're directly publishing your application to release, to production? Yes. Level? yes. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so it's possible to do it directly to production, but personally, okay, based, based on how I've seen uh, these large companies do it, it's usually not a good idea because you never know what could happen so okay. it helps to start from uh to start from the testing side and then you promote it to production okay cool uh, and then another follow-up question is when, when you're releasing maybe you release with uh the next version and perhaps you also add like the release notes is there a way that you can automate that uh, with fast lane to like make it add the release notes and the release versions yeah um just here where i specified the uh, the metadata or whatever there are the other things that i've left out but there are a host of options you can use and if they're available here so the the variety of things you can try using but yeah you can upload the the change log or whatever it is directly to Fastlane. Okay, cool. Thank you for that. All right. Um, thank you so much, Kevin, for showing us that. Anyone with that question? Yes, no, no, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was just checking what pre-commit is. <laughs> that was so nice. So um, when we're talking about the CI CD, we mostly, we hear people mentioning a lot about pipelines. So what are these pipelines? <laughs> what exactly is a pipeline? Yeah. 
Uh, somebody might think it's the estate there in Nairobi called Pipeline. Anyway, <laughs> who has a better way of like explaining what a pipeline is? I I can try, maybe I'm not very sure about it, but I can, a pipeline, uh, according to my understanding is the, the, the list of steps or the list of instructions or steps that uh, your application will follow for it to be automatically or for continuous, continuous uh, deployments to happen. For example, the first step may be like run tests, make sure they are running, and if it doesn't pass, then use. So the the whole the whole list of steps that have to happen for you to to complete the CI/CD process is is is, the, is your pipeline. Ah, I, I wouldn't have known that. Thank you, Dan Brick, for that. Um, uh, I hope that that was clear for everybody yes no okay so i i feel like um kevin has basically like done like a whole thing on what cicd is like how to go about publishing and you know writing your jobs oh by the way i had i had another question you see like how you showed us uh the how you write the the um, commands on 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 first lane and then you you specify lanes you know lanes does that is that does that equate the same way in in github action as jobs um yes i'd say it does okay, okay um i think i've run out of questions for now um, anyone with any question, anything that they need to add on this topic? No, yes. Okay. Uh, so, yes. Hmm? So um I don't know, I haven't seen anyone mention uh code magic, which I think is the most used by Flutter people. Has anyone used code magic? For CICD? Nope, I haven't. I've, I've used it before. But what drove me away was uh, the price. I see. So compared to fast uh, or oh, compared. Sorry, you're breaking up. Okay, sorry. Um, so I'm asking, can you hear me now? Yes. yes, I can hear you. Okay, so I was asking, according to your your assessment, uh, see, um, code magic is cheaper compared to uh, sorry, pipeline is cheaper compared to code magic. Sorry. Oh, uh, okay. Let me let me try and I don't know. There's a problem with my internet connection apparently. So, can you hear me now? I think I've come yes. closer to the internet. So um so you're saying uh code magic is uh more pricey compared to fast lane, right? Um it's not it's not really like uh, the value for money. Fastlane is actually free. It's just that code magic is now a service. And for me, I was looking at it from the point of uh if let's say my my GitHub actions mm -hmm. bill was to was to go too high mm -hmm. i would want a situation where i'm also paying for code magic so this this is like a solo project and so i'm trying nice. to keep the cost i'm trying to keep the cost as low as possible like i, I just published the ah sorry i just bought the domain on monday so right now i'm even trying to avoid hosting because the I had to buy the domain without the hosting. So I'm trying to find loopholes. So like I want to publish the web app on Firebase and then the another website on Vassell. So I just just cost cutting measures, hustling 
if you want to call it that. Okay. Um, then because you've been answered. Yes, yes. So I there's a time I was trying out fast limb. It was a it is a branch on one of my uh, projects, but I didn't get to complete it. So I think from what um from what uh, I think Kevin has shared. Yeah. From what Kevin has shared, uh, I think it's something that I would want to explore more. Maybe uh, if I have questions, and maybe I'll, I'll I'll get in touch with him and see if I can I can get some help from him. Uh, so about about your screenshots, uh, Kevin. Hello, can you can you hear me, Ken? Yes, yes, I can hear you. So about screenshots, do you like take them manually? There's there used to be a package on uh, on on Play Store on sorry, not on Play Store but on uh, pub.dev called screenshots. I think it has failed been to to be maintained, but you could do uh, automated screenshots. Basically, it can navigate your app and take screenshots. That's what I was experimenting with. Then it failed. Then I stopped the whole fast learn thing. I don't know if someone has anyone has used it. Do you do you automate, Kevin? Do you automate the process of taking screenshots, or you just take it? Uh, you take them uh, manually. Um, for me, I take them manually, but that's yeah. because you know now initially, thing posting screenshots used to be straightforward. You just take a screenshot and post. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, with uh, I don't know who started it, but now it's been turned into like. A field for designers where yeah. now you have to put the device then you have mm -hmm. to put some color you have to put the phone in a certain angle mm -hmm. yes so, it's changed it's yeah. like just screenshots of the several uh screens that you have yes yeah, so what what i do personally mm -hmm. is um i try to create a folder okay like if let's say i was in a team setting mm -hmm. i create a folder on the on the app Mm -hmm. on the app's uh, repository and mm -hmm. then just call it screenshots so if let's say i reach out to one of my designer friends and they mm -hmm. can do it for me or if maybe i finish the code on time and i'm able to do it myself mm -hmm. you just put the screenshot screenshots in there and then let the let the actions and fast lane sort themselves okay yeah so uh, if you automate the process of uh, sharing those screenshots or publishing those screenshots to, to let's say, Play Store, mm -hmm. would it be doing that every time? Or uh, do you have maybe, would you think of having something like a trigger that notices if any of these screenshots has changed, then like upload them, or it will upload them on every publish? On, on every publish? Um... How would you just... Uh, hypothetical i'd say maybe with every release mm -hmm. because you see you don't want a situation where you're like your designer maybe publishes screenshots for a future version mm -hmm. and then your app can't do what what the screenshots are showing that you can do i see yeah okay so, yeah if, if it goes with the release it makes more sense to me mm -hmm. Okay, um, thank you so much, guys, for the inputs. I have a very uh, a, a question, rather. The, do you guys consider security when it comes to CICD in any way? Yeah, that is, it's it's not it's non negotiable. Mm -hmm. So as as I showed you the secrets and everything, I have to use GitHub secrets to keep files certain files safe. Mm -hmm. because um, from past experience when people get a, get their hands on let's say like an API key or something mm -hmm. there's a lot they can do with it maybe not locally because I haven't seen anyone attacking me locally but I once published uh, a key for my Google Maps in one of my repositories mm -hmm. yeah. and someone now took 
took took it and started using it for their own purposes. Yeah, sure. Then find your bill getting so high. Um, obfuscation. Uh, anyone? Yeah, I, obfuscation. I'm, not sure. I'm not. I'm not sure if uh, most most from the the information I've shared with local developers, I don't see people obfuscating their Flutter code. I don't know if there's anyone who does that. This I, I do it, but from what I've seen, it's mainly because of laziness. Yeah, true. <laughs> because from what, what I've heard, most people are like it's flutter, so you can't reverse engineer the project to see like exactly what what code mm -hmm. was written mm -hmm. when compared to a native Android app. And in some ways it's true, but they're actually tools because yeah. I was trying it out and the actual tools which you can use to go and find the code itself, because mm -hmm. we already know you can get the assets. So yeah, yeah uh, sure. images, icons, that's that's very easy to do. But now when it comes to the code, that might be a bit tricky, but I'm still working on, there's someone's app that I'm still checking and mm -hmm. I've already zeroed in on where the code is. I just need to decrypt it, but... Okay. Yeah, obfuscation, that's, it's not negotiable. Yeah, um, and, and one, thing, one thing I noticed about obfuscation is we're using something like Sentry and or basically you are Crashlytics. If you obfuscate your code, the process of debugging becomes an issue, which basically will necessitate you to change your deployment process where you have to also include then the binaries and the, the, the source maps. Let me just call them source maps for now because it's closer to JavaScript. Let me just call them source maps. You have to like make sure you also upload those, those artifacts so that whenever you are uh, de debugging, you can get the whole context. Otherwise you will just get like uh, unknown um, symbols and you won't be able to debug your code. That is that is something that I feel if you're using if you're using uh, any uh, crash reporting service, it may be a bit of a headache to do obfuscation. But it's just something that you'll do once, set up how how you're going to deploy and also include the, the, all the artifact artifacts whenever you're debugging, and then that's it. So that, it's something that I would encourage people to do. Because imagine, imagine you're getting to a situation where you've written your flutter, your flutter, like maybe a passion project and gets to blow up, and then someone gets access to, to your code through maybe because you haven't obfuscated your code. I think it would be so detrimental to you because you it's like you're giving out your code for free. Someone else just takes it and makes a whole company out of it without your knowledge. Uh, yeah, interesting. Oh, wow. We just have a chat here. Uh, Mark is saying, is this me or I'm just in in awe of Kevin? He's so knowledgeable. Yeah. It's an honor to have him on the call. Um, So in my understanding, I think what we are doing, like the tools that we've just mentioned are like hosted CICD platforms, right? Um, has Does anyone... Uh, Try, has anyone tried the cloud-based CICD platform? This is where you go the cloud way, apparently. Anyone with even a, a like a... There's, there's one called Circle CI. Mm -hmm. But that, I had an experience with it in 2019 and... I, I vowed never to use it again unless someone else is paying for it. Because also, it's sorry. So sorry, I cut you off. No, 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 it's okay. Um so with Circle CI, it's it's pretty much that was it was pretty much before GitHub Actions was launched. Mm -hmm. So at that time it was one of the best options, but the cost, cost is what would get you. And um, in our case, we had a situation where like someone someone published code that didn't, I think the job, the job never completed. And it kept running for, I think for five days straight. And 
okay, the advantages we were, we were working with, working with APA insurance at the time. Mm -hmm. So they were the ones footing the bill, so it didn't really matter to us. But let's just say that the money that they had allocated to the project was gone in those five days. So that's why I tend to be quite skeptical of cloud-based, unless someone else is footing the bill. <laughs> because you see, it's, it's those situations where um, if you go over budget, you can just count it as a, as a expense. But for you, if, if you go over budget, then that means you don't pay rent. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I think I've used one AWS called Pipeline. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually the thing is saying about code is really like really interesting. Uh, normally when you're going to cloud, uh, what I've used in the AWS is uh, you normally set a uh, cost. You actually have to estimate the cost which you're going to. You have to have a budget and uh, you set up limits. So, each and every team member has to be like quite quite good at doing that or else you have to like speak to your team member otherwise uh, it's gonna blow up and i won't lie the cloud is quite expensive it's not as cheap as people normally say i remember i have a friend who left their easy to start uh, running for almost like six months the bill was crazy so uh when you go the cloud way, cloud way make sure you have knowledge of cloud otherwise you're going to just uh, uh give yourself a little bit of help i won't lie that's uh that's what i can say but i'm used to five points okay thank you maurice for that. maurice had said that but nikamali he cut his own statement short when you're using any cloud cloud-based ci system you have to set a budget and say if it gets to this amount in a month notify me so that you go and check if there's anything that is happening behind behind the scenes that you are not aware even if you're using something like cloud functions and and something like that if someone ddos like if you get ddos uh if you're using for example cloud function and and uh, someone ddos you uh you will you will incur that cost of basically those requests, those thousands of requests that have come in and you didn't know where they, they're coming from. So just to be safe, you set a monthly cap for, for any cloud-based cloud system uh, that is that has the ability to scale uh, without your knowledge. For example, if you're paying, let's say, for example, um, something like EC2 or Digital Ocean, where you are paying like $5 a month, depending, it doesn't depend on whether, for example, that is, I'm talking about servers now. Uh, for example, if, if you're paying like $5 a month, you don't, it doesn't matter whether you have so many clients, so many requests or, or so few. You see, that's, that is a fixed cost. You can always be able to, to manage that and you know what is coming at the end of the month. But those situations where you have, most CI/CD tools will will bill you depending on the number of minutes that you've run the the CI/CD uh, process. Uh, most of them like have like a, a number of free minutes. Then from then on, they're charging like let's say for example, maybe zero point zero zero something per, per per minute or per hour. So you just make sure that you have set in most uh, most of such systems. There's a on the billing uh, on the billing uh, section or the billing. Uh, feature you'll find uh, where you can set a monthly cap and when it gets there it will notify you and then you start proactively looking at problems if you don't do such a thing uh, i see people uh, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, problems where i see people going to aws and saying i can't pay pay this because i someone did ask me so you start arbitration and they will and they listen to your case to, to people's cases especially the reasons where maybe you hadn't expected something and it has come up they usually like me even uh clear away your debt but just to be sure you just set a cup a monthly like cup which doesn't and, and, and uh, another thing on that security like the thing 
uh, they are normally like uh, I think AWS guard guard duty or something. So mm-hmm. you need to like look into a way how you going to mitigate videos. And uh, one of the ways that I normally use, I I just love it coming from my own IP address. So I just limit the thing just coming just direct to my own IP address. And let's say, example, we're working on Timo 5. I'm going to like ask for everyone's IP address, then I root it, then I lock it. If you make sure like you normally lock it that way, it's going to be hard for that person to use you. Because uh, mostly people keep their own thing public. That's how it normally like gets a little bit of tricky. So normally look into security. If you the we normally call it if uh, the lesser the better. We normally call it that. So if a small number of people have this kind of service, the better for you to secure the service. I think uh, that's all I can say. Make sure you look into security and. Uh, yeah, everything is going to be good. But cloud is hell, cloud is hell. I've been there. Interesting, interesting. So, well, other than the cost bit of it, of, of the cloud part of it, um, what are the advantages of it? Because something can't just be existing for no reason. Um, does it have any higher advantages compared to, to the hosted one? Yes, I'd say it does, mainly because if if you set it up correctly, you can have a situation where you don't need to travel even with the, with the, maybe your primary development machine. So let's say maybe your computer is worth hundreds of thousands. If you set up a, the pipeline on the cloud, mm-hmm. you can work from something as simple as a tablet. All you need is a keyboard. As long as you push the code to the repository, all of that gets processed on the cloud. So yeah, it can make, let's say maybe we can say it can make your code or your project much more portable and easy to maintain. Okay, great, great. Um, thank you guys for that. Um, does anyone have any question? regarding today's topic other than being blown away because of things that we absolutely didn't know okay i think uh, i wanted to add on something uh main advantage of uh, let's say cloud based is if you set it up correctly you're going to have the most secure ci cd pipeline you have. Yeah, and, uh, nice session. I think it's my first time joining a Flutter session, so I was really amazed. Never done any Flutter thing. Uh, I hope to more sessions. Yep. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Maurice. Maurice, for joining. Um. So in today's session, ideally we wanted to like explore like different CI/CD tools that we have. However. I uh, I needed to like understand like how 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 is the level of understanding on CI C D and, and the tools that are used in Flutter. So now we, we know like um how to go the cloud way and the and the hosted way. And we also have like a couple of tools that we would also like to know, like Jenkins, Travis CI, we have Circle CI, GitLab, GitLab, Bitrise, GitHub Action, and Code Magic. So I think for the next session, maybe we could like uh compare how these tools are and probably have like a code lab on it and um yeah it, it was truly an honor to have you guys here and to also hear like uh, the chipping that you guys had so i think for the next session maybe it's just to probably clarify it all and then we move to the next topic um if we don't have i'll, I'll hope uh, that was a bit clear and, you know, we learned something. Do we have any more questions? Any inputs on this session? Yes, no. And um, special uh, thank you so much, uh, Maurice, uh, Kevin and Danvik. Danvik, sorry. 
thank you for the inputs. I think I've learned a lot, a lot, a lot. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to like see how we put it down, even as a community. Oh, and another thing, we have like the Roadcon KE Flutter app. So I think these are things we can practice doing from the code base there. It's open source. So yeah, so we can add tests. We've done like a test test uh, sessions so you can add test there and maybe automate it with any of these tools that we're learning um other than that i don't have much to say other than to thank you guys for sticking through oh for me this is more of a shameless plug mm -hmm. i kind of need testers for my application mm -hmm. So that I can get some feedback. Yeah, sure. Um, you can give us the name of your application, and maybe we give you our email address or something. I don't know. Just share with the community. I would be happy to give test results. All right. Yeah, we can. The easiest way would, would be to post it on the WhatsApp group. Maybe if you could uh, create um Google form or something where you're collecting emails. So just post the Google Forms on the Flutter Kenya WhatsApp. Then anyone who is interested may come and enter their email address and then you can follow up and use those email addresses. Uh, maybe I'm thinking you're doing uh, uh, those uh, Play, Store, uh, Play Store tracks. You can put their names there and then they can be able to test out for you. Um, yeah, so, um, oh, someone is not on our WhatsApp group. Let me, let me see. Can, can, can you kindly share the, the link to our WhatsApp group? So, um, also, I wanted to thank you guys for joining. Um, Vibes is really a, a good time to, to share. In fact, we hadn't even talked to Kevin for, for him to share such knowledge that he has shared. We're also learning from 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 everyone else. Uh, the advantage of, of vibes is that you can unmute your mic and interject and ask and all that to seek clarification. So it's not a it's not it's not um, a presentation per se. It's a discussion. If you have any valid input or any questions, you can just go ahead and ask. And that is how we 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 do it on uh, Flutter Vibes. And that is actually um, gets us to interact more and also remember that we have the monthly meetups so i think the uh, you can apply somewhere i think links are somewhere i don't know candy <laughs> but you can always apply uh to to speak for example kevin if you have uh maybe time to prepare a presentation on, on fast learn you can always do that maurice is there if anything you feel like you can share can prepare a presentation and then you can do on our monthly meetups. Yes. So I think this is all from me. Yeah, thank you, Danvik, for pointing that out. Um, the link that I have for WhatsApp is broken, so I I don't know how I can share it so that we don't share with like literally every everyone who's not interested in Flutter. Uh, but for them. For the speakers list, I will make sure I send an email through our meetup, uh, through our meetup emails. Um, yeah, and also for the next topic that you guys want to hear on vibes, please feel free to like fill up the the form as well. I will also share with that, sh share that with you. Um, yeah, and uh, the, who wants to be added on the WhatsApp link? I don't have the, the proper link. Me too, me too. I'm not in the group. Um, yeah, I'm I not in the group. Oh, okay. I think Danvik, you can access the group link. So maybe you can you can share it here before we end the call, since you're an admin. The correct one. Yeah, you're an admin. Um yeah that's that's like actually it. today hello i'm sorry i'm sorry about that actually today i've learned a lot 
I think I'm going to check on that. That was really awesome. And uh, maybe I'll look for you, you see. Maybe I can aid in back end if time is permit. So actually big thanks. I'm waiting for the link then uh, I need to get going. I have a few things that I haven't done today. Yeah, but thanks, Kendi. Yeah, and thanks to our community. It's it's an honor being here. Okay, cool. It's always nice to have guys around. Um, I think uh, then because share the WhatsApp link, so before you leave, you can check it out. Um, yeah, it's been real, man. I mean, time really goes real quick. You don't even realize it.